Hello, hello. Welcome back to the second Photoshop tutorial. And because we were working on a scanned image, I thought we would continue with a scanned image. So when you scan, it's quite possible that if you're if you have a background like this, which is white, you may find you can see the small specks of dust that were on your scanner bed on your image. So what I'm going to do is a very simple technique to remove and clean up a white background. It would work on a cream background or any plain coloured background, um, but I am going to explain a little bit about how the tool works, which will give you some ideas of why it wouldn't work if you've got a busy image. So um, the tool we are going to use is this tool here. It's called the Spot Healing Brush Tool. Um, there are other tools under this um, option, so we're going to click Spot Healing Brush Tool. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to Command and Plus and I'm going to zoom right in to my image. So I'm, I know where there is some dust on this particular image. So I'm going to bring you up here so you can see these little marks. They were on my scanner. Now when I print this image, you possibly won't be able to see them if it's printed small enough, but I will know they're there and it's the kind of thing that would bug me. So we're going to clean these up. Now, as you can see, by selecting this tool, I have a little circle. This is my brush. Now, you will get the same circle up if you're using the paintbrush or if you're using an eraser tool. So there is a keyboard shortcut to make this brush smaller and bigger, and that is your open and close square brackets. They are next to the return key on a Mac. I'm not sure where you will find them on a Windows keyboard, but you will certainly have the square brackets. So the closed square bracket will make my brush bigger and the open square bracket will make my brush smaller. You don't have to hold down any other key, it is just the open and closed square brackets. Now, this tool works, if I go to this little piece of dust here and click, you'll see it's removed that blemish. So what it does, is it deletes the pixels of an image that are inside of that circle and it fills it with pixel pixels that match the outside of the circle. I hope that makes sense. So if you're using an image with a lot of pattern or background, it's gonna get a little bit confused. So if I come over to this section here, for example, and use my spot healing tool, if you look really closely, what it has done is it has just moved pixels around and I've got a circle there and the image is not quite lined up because there are pi pixels around that are different colours and it's just tried to fill that circle with the pixels surrounding the uh, area that I want to clean. So if you make a mistake you can go edit and step backwards and that will remove what I've just done. I'm going to go I'm going to zoom out a little bit because I'm still a bit close and we're going to go back to this area here. Now if I use a brush this size in this area, it's going to blur a little bit because it's still picking up the black pixels from this area here. So again I'm going to go edit and step backwards. What I want to do is I want to make this brush smaller. So I'm going to go open square bracket, make it smaller. And even though it says spot healing brush, you can use, use it on lined areas like this. I'm going to stop there before I get too close to this area. And now I'm just going to click one at a time to remove those blemishes by removing the pixels that are discoloured and replacing them with pixels in the surrounding area. I do hope that makes sense. I mean, if it doesn't, you can still see this works. But removing just one at a time these little blemishes. Now um, this one here for example I'm going to make my brush much smaller so it doesn't pick up the pixels from this area of the leaf. That's going to remove that. Now what I would also like to do is remove these numbers so I'm going to make my brush just big enough to cover those numbers and I'm going to click and you can see that's actually got rid of that 4A for me. I'm not, sh not keen on that, let's get rid of it. I'm going to make my brush smaller to get rid of the number two. 
you might need to just patch a little bit if you get a little bit of a blur and you can just work your way around your image to remove any of these dust spots. I hope you can see what that's doing. Don't like that number one, let's get rid of him. There we go. And you can just work around your image. I tend to move quite, that's not a very good little bit there. You can just methodically move around your image to remove the dust spots that you're not happy with. Now, uh, I'm going to leave that number two next to the maple because that's obviously the, the text at the bottom. There is a way to get rid of the text at the bottom and we'll come to that in another tutorial. But for now, I'm just slightly cleaning up all of these little blemishes that I'm not happy with that might show on my print. It usually shows up if you've got a white or cream background or if you've got a dark colored background you might have a little white speck of dust on it so this is a really really easy way to clean up your image and I'm just going to command and zero to get that image back to the normal size and you can see all of my numbers are gone and when I print that I'm no longer going to have those little specks of dust that were on my scanner on my print so all that's left to do is we saved this twice previously, once as a Photoshop document and once as a JPEG. I'm um, just going to get rid of that little speck there because that's bothering me. Hang on a minute. Nope, that's on my screen. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to File and I'm just going to hit Save and that saved that as a Photoshop document. It's not going to ask me to give it a new name. It's just saved that over the current Photoshop document. Now, I could save as, and I want this as a JPEG, so I'm going to select JPEG, and what it's going to do is it's going to ask me if I want to replace the previous JPEG. Now, it is possible that I don't want to, and I could call this Tutorial 1B, for example. I'm going to save over the, the, the previous document because I've improved it and I'm happy with my improvements, so I'm just going to hit replace and we're back to this what quality do you want to save your images at? I still want it at 12 I still want it at the best quality so I'm going to hit OK now the good thing about the Photoshop document is we can continue to edit that as many times as we like and save over it if we wanted to save as we could have saved as like with the the same as with the JPEG and we'd have two copies of that image one which was clean and one which wasn't so um, I hope that all made sense. Um, your spot healing brush is actually a really valuable tool when you are um, playing around with images. So um, thanks very much for watching and see you soon.